So, um, yes. Uh, good morning from my side. Um, uh, you, you can see my, my title. Uh, actually, this is not my invention. I am not a policymaker, but uh, rather working how such a, a transformation can be done in reality. And indeed, it's a big challenge when we speak about uh, existing uh, building stock. And I will provide uh, some overview how it is um, in, in Estonia and um, how important um, building renovation is and what's the contribution of buildings to the greenhouse gas emissions. Perhaps it's a, a good uh, starting point. Uh, so uh, here you can see that um, energy re related uh, greenhouse gas emissions, so everything but uh, no uh, land use and forest restrictors, so no, no Lulu CF uh, included, when there is one important figure, which is 34% uh, of Estonian greenhouse gas emissions are allocated to the energy use of the buildings, and this 34% uh, is higher, for instance, when compared to the industry or transport or agri agriculture. So this is the single highest uh, contribution to, uh, to these emissions. And indeed, construction and real estate sector, it's, um, it's very massive. It's almost 50% um, almost of the total uh, emissions if we account also construction and um, production of the building materials. But operationally, is um, uh, 34%. Uh, when it comes to the final energy use, it's even more dramatic in Estonian case. You know that in Europe we account that about 40% is allocated to the, uh, to the building's energy use, but in Estonia, building's contribution is as high as 53%. It is possible that this uh, statistics is always lagging a bit behind. This is 21 data, and there might be some COVID impacts. So people stay, stayed more at home and, and so on. Energy use increased. Uh, but still, uh, during a couple of the last years in Estonia, this has um, risen ab above 50% what is uh, final energy use in buildings, and then followed by, by the transport sector. That's another massive one in Estonian cases. So one can imagine that when we speak about low-hanging fruits to, to implement efficiency first principle very strongly used in Europe when these buildings and transport are these sectors where you need to do something. Uh, in Estonia we have a kind of a overarching strategy. It's Estonia 2035 strategy which has a special indicator for uh, final energy use in non-residential and residential buildings, and we have a target values for, for these, so this is very important topic uh, here. And our long-term renovation strategy, this really aims to multiply actually deep renovation volumes, because renovo renovation volumes today, when we look at uh, turn turnover, they are not small. But uh, very often in the renovation, energy performance is not improved. So, so this is the problem and this is the reason why the starting point uh, uh, deep renovation volume in, um, in square meters is so low and needs to be multiplied by, by even factor three or in some building categories even by more. Uh, to make it this transformation to zero emission buildings available by 2050. So, so this is a real challenge and needs a change, not perhaps in renovation volumes as such, but to make existing renovation uh, deep renovation, deep energy renovation. This will make a big difference when this would be achievable. In Estonia, we have uh, put effort uh, uh, so far to renovation grants of um, multifamily apartment buildings. That's the upper figure you can see there are annual uh, governmental budget uh, to provide direct financial support for housing associations, which is typically 30% uh, 
direct financial support from the total renovation cost in these projects. And we speak about uh, 100 million or 150 million, which is uh, taking into account the size of Estonia, 1.3 million living here. Actually, very, very big uh, figures. And there, is, there are also some grants available for single family. So this has been so far the main effort. And uh, these renovation grants for multifamily apartment buildings, these have been available uh, since uh, 2010. So it's um, already close to uh, 15 years track we have in this path. And let's say from 2010, 2015, first five years, it was learning from the mistakes how you should not renovate, how, how to renovate so that you end up with a mold problems, no ventilation, bad indoor climate. So these, these were perhaps the first five years. And uh, the trick here actually, what was then learned, the main lesson to be learned was when you start to insulate the building, then install also ventilation system. So install a ductwork of a heat recovery ven ventilation before you put the additional insulation or to do it at the same time, if it is a prefabricated renovation, then put these ducts already in the factory uh, ready uh, when, when it is easy on the construction site to connect the ventilation units with heat recovery. And these have been used uh, low-rise and high-rise buildings. You, for instance, can see the ventilation ductwork installation. That has been a major issue in these renovation projects because everybody understands we need to put 20 centimeters of new insulation to cut the heating bill. But when you replace also the windows, the buildings will be completely airtight, no ventilation. And when you end up with a mold and uh, sick, bill, sick people, uh, so on, uh, this is not the way how to renovate uh, today. You really need to have these standardized, uh, let's say, systematic renovation concepts where we require these heat recovery ventilation installation when it is typically uh, 20 centimeter of additional insulation. And uh, what comes to the heating system, we already have effective district heat in Tallinn. So basically only what needs to be done is the balancing of a heating system, sometimes replacement of the thermostates, and then dropping down the heating curve because heat losses are much uh, smaller after such renovation where both insulation, new windows, and heat recovery ventilation reduce uh, drastically uh, heating need. If such uh, centralized uh, supply and exhaust ventilation with heat recovery is not feasible, we have another standardized concept where a heat recovery is based on the exhaust air heat pump. Uh, so from the mechanical extract ventilation from the exhaust air, the heat is taken with a heat pump and put back to the domestic hot water and to the space heating. And when we use uh, ventilation radiators, which have uh, air filters and uh, preheat intake air, so these provide an adequate indoor climate. And this solution has been more popular in, in taller buildings. But both have been uh, being used as a standardized uh, solutions, so being a kind of a precondition to get this governmental support of a 30% uh, renovation grant. And uh, this, is, uh, this is going pretty well, uh, about uh, 3,000 apartment buildings so far renovated, but 14,000 still to go. And we really say that this is win-win-win for both for inhabitants, government and environment, because uh, government actually will get this tax return, as you can see from value-added tax and labor taxes, uh, so 32% of the total cost of a renovation pro project will come back uh, in the form of these taxes to the governmental budget. And if government gives 30% direct support, it's a budget neutral. So that's, um, that's a, a scientific fact, what has been studied in real renovation projects, and you can see how it, how it forms. 
and, and when to have a win-win-win, so, and nobody is not losing. Does it look like a perpetuum mobile? No, uh, somebody is losing, we, we need uh, 60 to 70 percent less heating energy. So, uh, so this is indeed a driving force, but the heating energy saving is so massive. And what happens with electricity use when it depends on the project? If we install photovoltaic uh, panels, when electricity use will also decrease. If we don't install, then there will be slight increase because of new ventilation system. So minimum requirements of these grants do not require the installation of a photovoltaic, but when you will get 30% financial support, photovoltaic is highly uh, profitable. So most of um, housing associations today install if it, is, if it is technically possible. So if a power grid is um, capable to take this uh, power, then this will be installed. And when we also speak about electricity reduction in these type of renovation. So in Estonian case, this, um, our uh, nearly zero energy building major renovation so is uh, defined as energy performance certificate C-class and this C is a performance based requirement of these renovation grants what needs to be achieved but on the top of these performance based requirements which are basically technology neutral we also have a prescriptive requirements like these uh, specific insulation u values and heat recovery requirement a couple of these prescriptive requirements combined with a performance based uh, te technology neutral approach so this is quite well tested in estonia and works well and we expect that this deep renovation will be an answer uh, to that what is discussed in the energy performance of um, uh, energy performance of buildings directive proposal with the, what is under trilogue negotiations right now and when we speak about minimum energy performance standards as a new instrument um, uh, to control how energy is used in the existing building stock and where very likely the target will be for residential buildings with uh, uh, EPC class D uh, by 2033 or something which is uh, still negotiated but this is the likely that the, for residential buildings we are looking what's the average level in the building stock and when every every country every city needs to simu stimulate renovation so that the building stock average will be achieved and in non-residential buildings there are building specific requirements so every building needs to be moved out from these last uh, g and f classes by a specified year so it's um, very likely will be different logic for the residential buildings where it is expected that the government will stimulate and when it is expected that regul regulatory drivers are enough for non-residential sector and indeed what is today already in force uh, or let's say approved in july uh, new version of uh, energy efficiency directive ed directive was approved and this will make a really remarkable change as a current uh, energy saving in the final energy was 0.8 percent in a year this is now gradually increased to 1.3 percent then 1.5 percent and then even 1.9 percent which will make average saving uh, in the period of 24 to 2030, 1.49%. Uh, uh, and this really is a challenging. We have an ongoing uh, study here in Estonia to analyze the pathways, how these targets can be met. And then is the question in which sectors, which measures, energy saving measures you will need to do, how this can be achieved. There is not much time because 24 is just starting and 1.9% already in 2030. So it's really high ambition target. And we have defined quite many pathways. Uh, what is common for all of these pathways, we see that the contribution by buildings it's really dominating. 
independently what's the starting point of the policy or the pathway the buildings will do major uh, contribution that's quite clear and when the f buildings are followed by transport what is also very important in in a stone and case but here you can see that these uh, uh, dark blue ones represent households in Estonia and case 70% population living in, in apartment buildings, and so mainly coming from the renovation of uh, multifamily apartment buildings, indeed supported by single family, and this light blue is um, from non-residential buildings, and then the transport as a, as a yellow one, and industry, uh, agriculture, these are already much, uh, so much um, smaller saving potential. So to conclude, currently energy, operational energy use in buildings, it accounts 53% uh, of the final energy in Estonia, and 34% uh, of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, very high values both, and especially these new final energy saving measures, what are in the EED, these really make this energy renovation in the buildings in Estonia number one green transition measure, because this is the most impactful and especially deep renovation of multifamily apartment buildings, which are built before 2000 in Estonian case, really homogeneous building stock, we can say, in today's terms, practically not insulated, practically not ventilated buildings uh, that are homes for about 50% of Estonian population. It's a, it's a massive and it's uh, 14,000 such buildings uh, still to be renovated in coming years. We, we know very well what we need to do and when this is a question for the city, how they can stimulate on the city level. So renovation grants and other support measures have been effective instruments for multifamily apartment buildings. And we believe that in, when we speak about single family and non-residential buildings, when these market-based renovation and also regulatory drivers coming from the EPPD proposal uh, as these minimum energy performance standards maps, these can be very effective in these building categories. Thank you. I do have a few questions. First of all, now we have renovated a few thousand buildings. Uh, how do we uh, accelerate the transition so we can actually renovate 14,000? I understand we need to uh, accelerate about three times. Yeah, in, in the long term, uh, it, it would be nice to, to triple, but I would be very happy if that the renovation rate would be doubled. This would already be a big big process. Uh, in Estonian case, I think it's still, um, uh, it, it is the labor force is not a limiting factor today. And um, our problem has been that these renovation grants in some year, they issue 200 or 300 grants. And next year, there is no funding in the budget, it will be zero. And this is a kind of very fluctuating renovation market what we have had. Uh, this has been the main problem. If we get more stable level of renovation grants, then uh, and indeed take these technology improvements, uh, we speak about the district uh, renovation projects. However, all Estonian buildings are privately owned. So uh, district approach is something what we, we are testing, but depends on the willingness of housing associations. Sometimes they want to cooperate, sometimes they, they don't want. But I would say this is, this is a rather uh, a question of a governmental budget to have enough funding for the renovation grants. This will very easily double our uh, renovation rates in multifamily apartment buildings. Really enjoyed the technological approach that you described um, that has greatly improved renovating old Soviet era houses. Uh, what are the new challenges that you're working with on the, on the technological side? I mean, you're obviously generating um, innovation constantly. Uh, sure, in, indeed. How to get more energy saving, how to make in, it happen in cost-effective fashion. So Euro here is a very good consultant. But yes, maybe this um, uh, factory-made elements and industrial renovation is something we are looking for 
because uh, having such a homogeneous building stock and it is easy to put new elements to these buildings to make uh, new facades, new roofs. Uh, this, this is one very popular research topic and we also have uh, had uh, quite many pilot projects uh, with these uh, prefabricated elements, how the renovation can go. This, this is one research uh, direction. Uh, and, um, and indeed, when we are capable to out, outsource this renovation work from the building site to the factories, then basically we increase the productivity and then the labor questions, labor force is anymore not so critical because factories then produce really a big amount of elements what is needed in the, in the renovation. So we, we are working how these volumes can be doubled, what are technically needed to do it. So, uh, but I would say this uh, governmental budget is lagging a, a bit behind. Uh, technological re readiness is already a bit better. Having just visited one of those factories near uh, Tallinn, um, I can say that uh, you're absolutely right. Thank you very much, Mr. Kornitsky.